Hi there, Paul here from Sound Devices and welcome to our second online sound summit. It's been about five months since the last uh, online sound sum minute and so what I want to talk to you about today is what we've been doing in the last five months um, in terms of improving and developing further our eight series uh, range of recorder mixes. Uh, we've been doing a lot. Um, I'm going to assume a certain level of familiarity um, with the 8 Series, um, but very quickly for those who don't know what the 8 Series is, it's three models of portable mixer recorders. Um, there's the 833, which is an 8-channel 12-track recorder. There's the 888, which is a 16-channel 20-track recorder. And there's the Big Daddy, the Scorpio, which is a 32-channel 36-track recorder. Um, so without further ado, let's, uh, let's get into it. And the first thing I want to talk about, one of my favourite and probably one of the most exciting stories of um, the last five months in regards to the 8 Series, and that is the introduction of um, noise suppression within the 8 Series. This is an absolute world's first. There's no other portable recording device on the market which uh, does this sort of functionality. Previously, you'd have had, you have to work with an external bit of hardware to provide noise suppression functionality. So noise assist is the name of our, uh, of our algorithm. It's an optional plugin which you can download from our store. Uh, version 7 firmware, which we've recently released, does add a demo mode so you can try before you buy. It's just like a, a, ten, a beep every 10 seconds on the audio. If you like the effects of Noise Assist and it sounds good to you, you can go ahead and buy it. But basically Noise Assist, what does it do? Well, it's suppressing background noise without affecting the dialogue at all. It's way more advanced than a simple gate. A gate will affect, obviously, the voice at all as well. So Noise Assist is a very clever algorithm that's been in the making for a long, long time, and we released it in the last few months. So it's really effective on reducing air conditioning noise, distant traffic noise, generator noise. It can even dampen reverbs, uh, highly reverberant spaces as well. So it works fantastically and it doesn't affect the actual dialogue. So let's actually see how this works. Um, come in here, I'm going to demonstrate this on the um, 833 here. So I'm going to come into my menu and we've got this new menu here called noise suppression. And here you can enable noise assist and choose where to apply it. So you can choose to apply it to channels or your left right mix buses. You can only have two instances at once. So what does that mean? It means you can have maybe two channels or you could have both the L and R bus um, assisted or you could have one channel and one bus but no more than two at a time. Once you've selected your channel, uh, let's just come to my my um, channel two screen here, you can scroll to the NA field, NA standing for noise assist, and enter that, and then apply the amount of attenuation that you want. So you go from no attenuation, zero dB, all the way to 20. But like with any, <laughs> any processing, if you apply it too heavily, you're gonna get artifacts. So typically, you don't really need much more than two, three, four, or five, or six dBs of attenuation to be effective. I'd now like to talk to you about some other call processing, which we've just added in version seven as well. And while we're here, I'm just gonna to go to our compression field here. So yes, we have added compression. You can now have compressors on every channel each channel having totally individual control of compression uh, parameters. And at the same time, you can have uh, compressors on your all your buses as well. So on the Scorpio, you could have 32 different channel compressors running and 10 bus compressors running without any hardship at all. So you've got your compression curve shown there. And then to the left of that, you have your compression attenuation meter. And then below you have the various uh, parameters which are controllable by the, the toggle switches just here. So the first a toggle switch uh, sets your compressor to be either pre or post fade, or you can turn the compressor off altogether. You then have a threshold control, which can be set anywhere from zero to minus 40. Then you have a ratio control, which can be set anywhere from 1.0 to 20 to one ratio. 
You then can adjust the knee between soft and hard, and then you have control over attack and release. And you have all the same parameters for buses as well. So that's available on all three models, the 833, 888, and Scorpio. You have limiters, high pass filters, uh, auto mixing, noise assist, compression, EQ. You've got a, a wide range of capability there. Okay, so I wanna to talk to you and now about another important feature. Now from day one, we, um, we introduced the SD Remote app for Android and iPad. And it's always been an intention to evolve this app as the 8 series evolves. And we have just taken one big step with the version 7 uh, firmware release that came out recently. And I'd like to show you some of these features. So just come over here and you can see right here, SD Remote running on um, an Android tablet. This happens to be a Samsung S4. It will also run on any iPad as well. Um, you connect SD Remote to your 8 Series either wirelessly via Bluetooth, or you can connect directly via USB cable to the USB-A port. Um, the iPad only allows Bluetooth wireless connection. It's important to note that the Bluetooth range when you have an antenna on here is pretty amazing. I mean, I've easily got 50, 60 meters and still been able to uh, uh, get good control. So let's have a look at the new features of SD Remote here. Um, I think anyone who's familiar with the app will immediately see one obvious difference is that now we have six um, 16 channel meter views. Um, we still have the eight channel views, but now we have 16. And this Scorpio running here uh, in this uh, setup um, also has a, a meter tab for monitoring channel 17 through 32. What else? Uh, we also have channel screen um, control. So if I select any one of these buttons at the bottom, I can switch between settings for various channels. And in these channel screens, we've got arm control, we have channel naming, we have trim gain control, which is really important, as well as fader control, pan control, muting, and a PFL switch here. So this gives great control. Now, in terms of fader control, if you go back to the main screen, and it's easier to show actually on the eight channel view, you'll see <clears throat> these little faders. So now I can also mix from SD remote, <clears throat> which is actually a great tool for if you're mixing a live event in a small venue and you need to walk the venue to check the mix from various parts of the venue. So now you can hook up via Bluetooth and do a walk and adjust your mix. Now, for many applications, you don't want to mix via tablet. You'd rather use like um, a hardware linear fader controller like this or use the faders on the front panel, in which case you can very simply hide the faders and not, not have them appear so you can't accidentally adjust them from here. Now, when you are using the soft faders, uh, the, the faders on SD Remote, in fact, it doesn't matter with any form of controller and the 8 Series, um, we have this uh, new feature called Soft uh, Fader Pickup, which allows the faders and the trim controls to remain in sync. So for instance, here, you can see the faders move when I'm adjusting controls here. Um, I can adjust faders here, and like um, channel three here, and the channel, the physical fader on Scorpio won't suddenly change the value until it picks up that last value. As you can see, it's just about to move here. It's just picked it up. So we call that feature soft fader pickup. And that's important because it keeps your faders in sync. And when you're going from one controller to another and you adjust the fader, it's not gonna suddenly jump to that new fader's position. It's, it's gonna uh, uh, transition smoothly. Okay, so one other feature I'd like to talk about on SD Remote before I leave this um, is we have a file transfer mode button. So I can now put the Scorpio into file transfer remotely, which is pretty useful, especially in a situation where you're uh, remote controlling your whole setup over IP. Now, I'm not gonna get into the whole detail of how you can control this whole setup from anywhere in the world via internet. I've done videos on that before, and it's beyond the scope of this presentation. But I can hook up um, a device file transfer, file transfer to um, the 8 Series, and then have those, and then be able to 
transfer the files on the drive here remotely to anywhere in the world. Let me actually show you something which is pretty cool. I've got my phone at the moment hooked up via USB-C on the Scorpio to the lightning port on my phone. And now I'm in file transfer mode. Um, I can go to um, the files app. Let's just show you here. Um, and if you look very closely on the screen, hopefully you can see this, whoops. Um, you can see that the drives uh, 833 SD1 and Scorpio SSD, which are the drive, the name of the drives actually in Scorpio right now, are appearing in my files app on my iPhone. There is an equivalent app on Android as well. But the nice thing about this is I can remotely set this to do that. I can then come into my um, access a drive and then access a folder and then do all sorts of like cool things like um, move, delete, copy, duplicate, rename, share, edit files from here. So you can set the device remotely into file transfer mode to enable that connection as well. While we're on the subject of Scorpio, um, it should be worth mentioning that we've doubled the channel routing capability of Scorpio. So now what that means is you can route any input source, no matter whether it's a mic, line, AS, USB, Donze, SL source, whatever it is, it can now be routed to channels 17 through 32. So all channels now have access to all sources. On channel 17 and 32, you now also have trim gain and high pass filters. So it really does expand the capability there. Um, Dante channels are now available, all 32 Dante channels are now available to all channels 1 through 32 as well. Now uh, another cool feature I want to talk about that's been asked for for quite some time is uh, Q marks. Uh, the ability to mark points of interest during recording or playback so that you can later review them from the ATIS series or even review them from a door running on a computer. So now we do have QMark support and let me just show you that um, here. Um, so just come back to my main screen here. So when you're recording and or during playback, I can use the select plus fast forward shortcut to lay a cue mark, or I could use one of these um, toggle switches to do that. And actually I've uh, put a, a shortcut on my favorite toggle here. So if I move my favorite toggle, you can see a Q01 appeared at the very top of the LCD there. So I'm laying cue marks during record quite happily. I've also laid a cue mark delete on my return toggle, like so or you can use the select plus rewind shortcut. But you can lay, I think, up to 100 cue marks per take um, for review later, which is really nice. Now these cue marks can be uh, play, uh, reviewed on the 8 series itself, but also within uh, certain doors like Reaper or Adobe Audition, and there's others too. So really useful feature. Now, even if you don't use cue marks, um, you can, use the cue mark jump feature to jump to the very end of a take and then maybe rewind 10, 20, 30 seconds to check the audio at the end of the take. Now that's particularly useful if you're doing long concert recording and um, you know you don't want to have to fast forward all the way to the end of that take to be able to review and check the audio quality at the end of the recording. Now you can literally just jump to the very end of the recording Scroll back 10, 20, 30 seconds, hit play. Yep, yeah, sounds fine. I'm assuming the whole recording was okay. So that's Q marks for you. Um, now, I do want to talk about a feature which I think is going to please a lot of people because it re was requested a lot. Uh, a lot of people said, on specific, especially on the 888, on the 833, but we've also added this functionality to the 888 and Scorpio too, that they wanted on the 833 a couple of extra knobs for controlling channel seven and eight trim and fade again. And we're going, well, you know, how can you do that? I mean, software is clever and all, but it can't magically <laughs> make two more hardware knobs <laughs> materialize. But we have done something which effectively achieves the same thing with software. So let me show you that right now. Um, so now I can, um, make the headphone and select encoders become trims and faders for channel seven and eight. 
and you, you've got various ways to program the, these knobs to do that, and you've got some flexibility. So let me just show you how to do that very quickly. I'm going to go down to my um, system menu and come in here and go down to my toggle switch action. So I can enable this functionality by programming these toggle switches at the bottom of the LCD. So for instance, here on my star, if I activate star, my select encoder is going to become my channel 7 fader control. If I activate star 2, then it's going to become my channel 8 fader control. And you've got all these other various options for programming either trim or fader control on various shortcuts. Check that out. It gives you so much quicker access to channels 7 and 8 on the 833, channels 9 and 10 on the 888, and channels 13 and 14 on the Scorpio. Okay, one sort of last thing I want to talk about, which also expands the control um, of the 8 series system, gives even more flexibility with the control, is enhance keyboard shortcuts via a USB keyboard. Um, so now we've added shortcuts to every channel screen and also shortcuts to emulate the toggle switches at the bottom of the LCD. So now we have shortcuts to, this, to the uh, select encoder, the headphone encoder, these toggle switches, the menu and the meter buttons, and the PFL switches here. That essentially means that you can control virtually every function of the 8 series from a USB keyboard. That gives a lot of flexibility. In fact, I've been doing this whole demonstration um, from uh, basically a, key, a USB keyboard. Now, it's not just USB keyboards that are supported here, but any device that will emulate a USB keyboard, such as the X keys. Now, we introduced support for the X keys in the last uh, 6.10 firmware release, and these come in all shapes and sizes. Check out their website. They come in short, medium, long, um, wide, uh, different versions, and basically you get a, a number of programmable buttons which can em be programmed to emulate any USB keyboard command. You can even have them, uh, uh, you can program macros, so multiple serial USB uh, keyboard commands, so you can achieve um, multiple actions with one button press. But yeah, this just plugs into the USB A port on a Scorpio or via a hub and gives you that extra control. Um, we also have um, um, another USB device here which emulates the USB keyboard. This is the input stick just here. It's a, it's a wireless dongle, Bluetooth dongle, and it emulates a USB keyboard, but this time I can control um, via an iPhone app. Um, and that's, I'm doing the whole demo using this iPhone app right now. So it makes it super flexible for control. So that's uh, mainly it. I mean, I've scratched the surface. Before I, I end this presentation, I do want to sort of just go over some of the, um, the, the little things. One that I think many people will be interested in is now we have a shortcut to creating a sound report across all three media with just one action, one flick of a switch. Um, so yeah, you can program um, uh, create sound report on one of the toggle switches or MIDI map it to a button on your controller and it will create um, a sound report in the record folder on all three media with one action. So it's got a lot of time on set. Uh, with regard to uh, sound reports, we've also um, um, made the file name format of the sound report more descriptive. So now it includes the date and the record folder name. And this is going to make it much easier for post-production to identify what folder they need to work with. Um, uh, we also have, uh, with the scene increment feature, finally implement, implemented skipping the I and the O characters, which we know can, co can cause confusion because they're so similar to the one and the zero. And although this sounds really minor, I think I understand why this is important for a lot of people. We now have an option to make your time code counter on the 8 series uh, LCD uh, be switchable between either big eight, uh, big time code or big absolute time counter display. So enjoy that one. Anyway, that's all for me. Thanks for listening. Um, and I hope to be able to rattle off a whole bunch of other new features at the next... Uh, online sound summit but uh, 
Then again, it'd be nice to see you all face to face sometime too. Thanks for listening and take care.